TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. With less than two weeks before Israel's parliamentary elections, polls predict that Prime Minister Netanyahu's Likud will emerge as the largest party but will probably fail to secure a necessary majority for a government coalition. A bipartisan letter signed by 70 Democrats and 70 Republicans calls on U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to ensure that any renegotiated nuclear deal with Iran will also address the full range of threats it poses to the region. The Turkish Navy concludes a wide-scale exercise titled Blue Homeland 2021. With less than two weeks to go until Israel's parliamentary elections commence, shifts within the country's political landscape are yet to forecast conclusive outcomes. According to the latest poll conducted by Israel's Channel 13 News, if elections were held today, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's Likud would emerge as the largest party with 29 mandates, followed by the veteran leader's principal centrist rival Yair Lapid, whose Yesh Atid party, according to the poll's prediction, would secure 20 mandates out of Jerusalem's 120-seat parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew. However, the poll also suggests a clear shift in favor of the latter, who is more likely to secure the minimum legal requirement of 61 mandates or more for a viable coalition to emerge. Therefore, while 35% of respondents regard Netanyahu as the best suited to serve as prime minister, in contrast to Lapid, who secured 20% support, Israel's parliamentary system may bring an end to Netanyahu's hold of Jerusalem's seat of power. It is important to highlight that two weeks in the context of Israeli politics is considered to be a relatively long period of time that may bring about substantial fluctuations. Nonetheless, the latest trend in favor of the centrist Yesh Atid party has drawn its leader into the crosshairs of incumbent Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, who evidently stepped up his campaign focus by amplifying Yair Lapid's lack of security-related experience at a time of increased tensions between Israel and the Islamic Republic of Iran. למנוע מאיראן להתחמש בנשק גרעיני. אם לאיראן יהיה פצצות אטום, היא מתכוונת להכחיד אותנו. והשאלה, איך עוצרים את זה? משום שהם לא עוצרים את זה, וזה לא סיסמת בחירות כאן, זה עסק רציני מאוד. אם אתה לא יכול לאסור את איראן, אז יש איום קיומי על המשך קיומה של מדינת ישראל. והשאלה, מי יעצור את זה? כשהלכתי לקונגרס, להתנגד להסכם הגרעין המסוכן עם איראן, יאיר לפיד, שמבקש בסתר להגיע לראשות הממשלה בעוד שבועיים, אמר שאני גורם נזק לביטחון ישראל. אז מי יעצור את איראן? יאיר לפיד, הוא יעצור את איראן? הוא לא יעצור את איראן, ולא גדעון, ולא בנט. מי שיעצור את איראן... זה רק אנחנו, ממשלת ימין יציבה של הליכוד בראשותי. In contrast to Netanyahu's election campaign emphasis on his government-initiated COVID inoculation campaign and defense policy, Lapid is seemingly focusing his party campaign on the necessity to deal with the economic ramifications of the corona crisis, while in tandem, repeatedly highlighting perceived failures of the incumbent government, in all that relates to domestic challenges after three consecutive elections in less than two years. מדינת ישראל בעיצומו של משבר כלכלי. הממשלה שופכת כסף כדי להשתיק אותו עד הבחירות, אבל הוא שם. 90 אלף עסקים נסגרו השנה, מאות אלפים נמצאים בחלט, אנשים שוקים בחובות. זה משבר אמיתי שפוגע בכיס של מיליוני אזרחים. בלי טיפול אמיתי, הוא ילך ויחמיר. מה שמחמיר את המצב זה שהמשבר... לא מנוהל. קורונה יש בכל העולם. ממשלה של 36 שרים שלא מסוגלים לעבוד ביחד, רק אצלנו. מדינה בלי תקציב כבר שנתיים וחצי, רק אצלנו. מודל חל"ת שהוא פשוט עידוד לכלכלה שחורה, רק אצלנו. אז מה עושים? הדבר הראשון שאנחנו צריכים, ובלעדיו לא יקרה כלום, 
זו ממשלה. ממשלה שפויה, מתפקדת, יעילה, חסכונית, ממוקדת. 18 שרים, סמכויות מוגדרות, מטרות מוגדרות. In other news, a bipartisan letter signed by 70 Democrats and 70 Republicans called on U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to ensure that any renegotiated nuclear deal or set of agreements which the Biden administration hopes to attain with the Ayatollah regime in Tehran would, quote, comprehensively address the full range of threats that Iran poses to the region. The letter further highlighted that as Democrats and Republicans from across the political spectrum We are united in preventing an Iranian nuclear weapon and addressing the wide range of illicit Iranian behavior. Therefore, the U.S. lawmakers continued, any future agreement must address three core tenets, including their nuclear program, ballistic missile program, and funding of terrorism. In response to this letter, which was initiated by Democratic representative of Maryland, Anthony Brown, and the Republican representative of Florida, Mitchell Waltz, Iranian Foreign Minister Muhammad Javad Zarif released a statement on his Twitter account in which he asserted that the 2015 Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action was already comprehensive, while further claiming that the 2015 nuclear deal was only implemented by Iran. The Ayatollah regime's top diplomat went on to reiterate Tehran's demand for the U.S. and E3, in reference to the United Kingdom, France and Germany, to live up to their commitments made under the 2015 nuclear deal. Only then, Zarif concluded, Iran will reciprocate. Meanwhile, the United States announced fresh sanctions on the Islamic Republic over human rights abuses. In a statement published by the State Department, it stressed that the United States made clear its concerns about the abuses the Iranian government continues to perpetrate against its citizens, including the unjust detention of far too many in deplorable conditions. Consequently, two Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps interrogators were targeted with sanctions over, quote, their involvement in gross violations of human rights, namely the torture and or cruel inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment of political prisoners and persons detained during protests in 2019 and 2020 in Iran. When asked at a State Department press briefing on what the designation aimed to signal to Iran, spokesperson Ned Price said the following. Well, I think the message we're trying to send is clear. The United States is uh, committed to promoting accountability for those responsible for human rights violations uh, and abuses. Uh, that includes in Iran, um, as well as any other country uh, around the world. It's precisely why today Secretary uh, Blinken announced the public designation of uh, these two Iranians under Section 7031C uh, of the Department of State Foreign Operations and Related Programs Appropriation Act. Um, uh, and it's an act that allows us to take these actions in response to gross violations uh, of human rights. The, the broader point we have made um, uh, is showcased by today's example. Um, we can pursue what is in our interests. Uh, and an Iran that is permanently and verifiably barred from ever obtaining a nuclear weapon is in our interests, uh, just as we uphold and act in accordance with our values. Uh, and it is consistent with our values uh, to make clear that there will be consequences for the sort of gross violations of human rights uh, that these individuals uh, engaged in. The Iranian foreign ministry did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment. Turning to the eastern Mediterranean, Aegean and Black Seas, where the Turkish Navy concluded a wide-scale exercise titled Blue Homeland 2021. According to the Turkish Defense Ministry, 82 warships, 17 naval aviation assets, amphibious marine forces, Turkish Air Force units, and special operations teams participated in the drills. And while the exercises were conducted in close proximity to Greece and Cyprus, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan stressed that his country's only aim is to protect its rights and territories. This year is much more powerful, much more capable, much more organized in a way that we have done with our national and national weapons systems. No one country in the ocean, in the sea, in the sea, in the sea, in the sea, we are only Hazır ol cenge, 
İsteysen sulhu salah diyen ecdadın rehberliğinde vatanımızı ve haklarımızı korumaya çalışıyoruz. Deniz kuvvetlerimiz birikimi, disiplini, nitelikli personeli ve üstlendiği tüm görevlerde elde ettiği başarılarla bizleri gururlandırıyor. It is important to highlight that the Turkish reference to the so-called Blue Homeland refers to the substantive areas of the Aegean and Mediterranean seas, including maritime regions that are regarded, based on the laws of the sea, as part of Greece and Cyprus. Nevertheless, in light of Ankara's long-standing dispute with Athens over maritime claims, Turkey has never signed the United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea, which, as aforementioned, favors under Article 121 the legal claims of Greece. Thank you for watching us. As part of TB7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Balbados in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.